Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Rick Savage. What's going on out there, in your son? Oh my gosh, you are so much fun. I, I I know I've been looking forward to this interview for such a long time, and actually they're more like conversations. But you have such an amazing personality, number one, and you have just got an amazing experience that you've been you've been you know given in life that I just think is so incredible to witness and I'm I'm so excited to talk to you about the the many different sides of you um number one most people know you as a wrestler right heavy metal Rick Savage tell me yeah. tell me what that was like what that part of your life has been like uh, the wrestling I mean why why uh, getting out of the army back in 1990 um, I bumped into a guy that was a pro wrestler, and he kind of, I'd always kind of toyed with the idea because I was a big kid. Mm-hmm. And people were always like, hey, you need to go to a wrestling school. Right. So he was going to a wrestling school with uh, Ivan Koloff and Bobby Fulton, two uh, legend wrestlers, and I just didn't have the money at the time. So here I am, I go, I get out of the army, I go home, and the first thing I did was run into. A friend of mine from high school, whose brother has started a little pro wrestling school in a garage, and that became, you know, that's where I got started. Was in a was in a garage in Waynesville, North Carolina. Wow! But it was within the budget. It was two hundred and fifty bucks to be trained, and that I could come up. With. So. Right, right. Well, I mean, I, I definitely would say that that two hundred and fifty dollars was a phenomenal investment because you've had an amazing career, you know. So that's that's pretty that's pretty fabulous. Now, um, you're also, you know, you've got some things to your attached to your title that I, you know, I never even really thought of. You know, when people hear Rick Savage, you know, you're an author, what, and a historian. What has that been like? I mean. You know, did you ever grow up thinking you were going to be an author and a historian? I mean, I can see well, a wrestler because you're a big kid, but. Yeah, you know, it's weird. I do not come. My, my father was an English professor who uh, was one of the nation's leading experts on the poet John Milton. And my mother was a high school and college librarian. So I did not come from traditional pro wrestling stock. Right. If you will. So my first, you know, my first love was always I loved literature, I loved history, reading history, um, reading about the Civil War, World War II, the Revolutionary War, the Renaissance period, everything. Just reading about it, and then going, you know, and then eventually uh, I talked my parents into stop taking me to the beach in the summer and take me to. Gettysburg and Vicksburg and take me to Antietam and take me to Richmond, Virginia, to the Museum of the Confederacy where I can see this history I've been reading about. And that's right. kind of how I got the bug for it. Wow, that's that's incredible. I didn't actually expect to hear that. <laughs> um, those are the those are the kinds of things I like doing with my children, by the way. I love taking them to historical places. You know, I've taken them to the, you know, Pennsylvania to see the Liberty Bell and, you know, the Benjamin Franklin mm-hmm. Tunnel and all that stuff. History is great and my my daughter loves George Washington Carver, so we have to go do that one soon, you know. But wow, that's really Absolutely. Cool. that it, it's I, I think history is so important and I think that kids today, you know, it's like that's the worst subject for so many kids. They a lot of kids just hate it. They don't want to do history. They don't they don't get you know, get the best grades in their history classes. But, you know, I think it's really great hearing that side of you and I mean you've been a role model for a lot of a lot of younger kids, right? I mean, wrestling is huge for the boys and you know, a lot of the, the females too love it. So that is really, really awesome. And I know that with your T V show, um, Savage Family Diggers, you you found a lot of Civil War artifacts, didn't you? Yeah, we found Civil War artifacts. We found artifacts. My my goal was try to find, you know, historical places that maybe aren't part of the mainstream. You know, there's Americans living in this country right now that have never heard of what we had back in the eighteen forties called the Mormon Wars when, you know, the Mormons were actually being persecuted and the government was going to send troops out. So, you know, there's a lot of little bits and pieces of history that falls through the cracks, and that's what we were trying to explore. Mm-hmm. Because also, selfishly, I figured that's a place that probably is going to have more artifacts than a right. national place that people have been sneaking into for years. So. Right, right. And, I mean, you found quite a few things from what I've read. 
Has there been anything that you've claimed is your absolute favorite, favorite, favorite found item? Uh, you know, that's a tough call because i found so many different things and all of them. When I find stuff on a battlefield, a Civil War battlefield uh, especially, when we dig on the 1864 battlefields like Cold Harbor and Petersburg where the soldiers were in trenches, and they stayed in these trenches for all to the time, that's when you find some of the most interesting personal artifacts, like mm-hmm. lead bullets carved into chess pieces mm-hmm. and other things that soldiers would just create while they were mm-hmm. bored. You know, they didn't have iPhones, so yeah. they would carve stuff and make stuff, and sometimes we still find these. And to me, when I'm sitting there looking at a bullet that some bored soldier carved into a rook for his chest for his chest pain, I think that's one of the coolest things I could ever find. Right, right. I, I, and the story that goes behind that, you know, makes you wonder, you know, what what were they thinking? What were they doing? Were they scared? What led to, you know, the carving that they did? I mean, there's just so much that it could be. Like, I, I imagine that that would be one of the one of the coolest things ever to find, you know, and just wonder where it came from and yeah, that's that's really that's really awesome. And you also you have a radio show too. You're a busy man. You're a very busy man. How do you keep up? Um, I just I don't take days off. <laughs> wow, wow. So so with your radio show, and I, I I've been following you on Twitter, and um, I I know that you've been posting about you know interviews and stuff that you have coming up on on your radio show. Mm-hmm. Um, what what do you what do you love most about your radio show and doing your interviews? Because for me, I, that's just as somebody who does the conversations and you know asks asks people questions. I just there are certain things that I I really look forward to. So I'm curious as to what your answer is on this. Well, for me, you know, um, my co-host, the show is the Savage Tire Rockets Pulse, and we're on Saturday and Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Um, SunnyRadio.com, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. And uh, we're also on uh, W, uh, it's uh, ROM, W-R-O-M, Radio.net, out of Detroit, at midnight on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we're on, we're on all over the place. But the plug aside, the best part of it for me, my co-host is Eric Turner from the uh, 80s rock band Warrant. Mm-hmm. And we interview wrestlers, we interview rockers, we interview actors, actresses. Mm-hmm. We've had astronauts on the, you know, we've had everybody from Leah Thompson to uh, members of Leonard Skinner on the show, you know, so we get a pretty diverse group, and the fun part is finding out from these folks, you know, what what was it that made you become an actress, or what made you become a rocker, a guitar player, a drummer, what what was it that inspired you, how old were you, and it's amazing, no matter how many people we interview, it's almost exactly the same story, every one, you know, so it's always interesting to find out what people are like when the lights are off, you know, when when the stage lights are off and they're doing their own thing, what are you you really like, are you a schmuck, are you a douche, are you a good person, you know, and that's what we're looking for. Right. I, I have to say that one of my favorite things to find out is, you know, who are they a fan of? Who, who you know what I mean? Um, we, exactly. We're all a fan of somebody, right? And everybody who knows me knows mine is Bon Jovi. My, it's my biggest thing. John is just somebody that I, I look up to and I admire and I just absolutely adore him and have since I was five years old. And so everybody knows that about me, but I'm like, but who are theirs? You know, everybody has to be a fan of someone and everybody has had that moment when they're a kid where they see somebody up on the silver screen and they're like, man, that person is so great. So I, I definitely, I love getting to talk to people and figure that out as well. And um, so thank you for actually taking the time to talk to me. So now I got to know who's your, who are you a fan of? Who's your favorite? Oh man, if you're talking music wise, um, I've already, you know, I got my first single and video coming out uh, April 22nd for Rockwell Records. Right. So some of my heroes are playing with me on that track. I've got the legendary Carmine Peace doing my drums. I've got uh, Greg Smith from the Ted Nugent Band and uh, Tony Franklin from White Snake did my bass tracks. I've got uh, Ted Poley from Danger Danger doing background vocals. 
Steve Brown from Trickster and Def Leppard is also doing guitars. Mike Orlando from Adrenaline Mob does the lead guitars. So right. we did kind of a Metallica-esque version of the old Steppenwolf song, Born to be Wild. And we did a video with it. And it rocked pretty hard. It was it was it was fun to do, and you know those are kind of those are my heroes. You know, right. you know Carmine of Peace. You know, good lord, he's the godfather of rock drummers. <laughs> you're you know here the guy he does a segment on my radio show. You know, it's a trip. That's great, and that you know that's why I wanted to ask. I I knew, you know, Tommy was telling me he's like Melissa, you got to ask him about the people playing on his on his you know album because he's like they're just so great. And I was like absolutely, and you know then I asked you your fan question and you 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 answer you know all of that and I'm like wow you know I knew about you know Danger Danger but I didn't know about everybody else like Tommy was leaving that a surprise for me I guess but so so recording you know your song with them born to be wild recording you know that that over in in this style you said you guys had a blast and everything i mean was it more than what you expected it to be it was you know i'm i'm a child of the 80s mm-hmm. I grew up watching Motley Crue, Best Leopard, you know Danger Danger Warren, all these bands and here i am now I work, you know, I was just on stage with Brett Michaels two weeks ago, and I was singing Cherry Pie with Brett on stage <laughs> two weeks ago, and I did a video with these guys, and I got to sing, and I've been on stage and sang with Ted Foley of the Black Skull, so I've gotten to experience it on stage, backstage, in the tour bus, everywhere, and I gotta tell you, everything I always dreamed it would be, it really was. I mean, oh, it's, it's just, it's it's been like being a little kid again a little bit, you know, when I'm doing it. And they Eric Eric Turner, my co host, he laughs at me sometimes. He calls me the giant groupie because <laughs> I love I'm just they they like watching me. They're like you're just like a big kid. You're just sucking it all in back here. And I'm like, Yeah, because it's awesome, man. You exactly. guys take it for granted. I love this stuff. Exactly, exactly. I think that is so great. And you know, I mean you know, I know everybody says they're just people, but when these are people that you've looked up to for such a long time and you've listened to and you've, like, taken it all in, yeah, to be there right there with them, how unreal, like, just how how awesome is that moment for you? That's got to be great. I love I'm it. standing on stage singing Cherry Pie with <laughs> to 10,000 people in an mm-hmm. arena with Steve Brown and, and – uh, PJ from Trickster came up and joined me. We're all doing oh cherry pie together. And I'm I'm just like, this this is it. This is what even I die tomorrow. Right. I've done I've done everything I ever wanted to do, you know? Right, right. Oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, congratulations to you. That's that's so incredible. But you know, is is being a singer and ha- you know, making an album and, and, and recording music, is that something that you have always wanted to do? Because I mean, you have just done so many other things that I just think, wow, is this just something that you were, like, playing around with? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll do it and see how it goes. Or is this something you really, really wanted to do for a long time? Since I was a freshman in high school, 1983, we did an air band, a quiet riot, come on, feel the noise. And I watched people in the, st- the bleachers, people jumped up and started dancing, and I put in quotes, females, and that was really all it took for me. I was hooked. I had the bug at that point. I was like, man, I want to I want to do something that gets me in front of lots of people and makes me right. pop like that. Right. And, you know, I, but I looked in the mirror in 1983, and I was a far cry from, from a rock guy. You know, I wasn't tall, skinny. I was, let's just say I'm tall, maybe not so much, but I wasn't skinny with long hair. That wasn't right. going to happen. So I ended up being a wrestler instead. But... My dream, my dream was always to be a rock star. Always wanted to be a rocker. And, you know, now I've, I've, you know, even though it's not my career and the music business has yeah. been pretty much wrecked and devastated by uh, oh, the internet. It but, uh, I, you know, I, I was able to live my dream. You know, I've been accepted into the, into the rock community. They've been good to me. All the bands, all the other guys have been, have been wonderful to me, to my wife. It's just been, it's been one of the, the best experiences of my adult life. Right. Oh, that's that's great. And, you know, speaking of your wife, I have to tell you, I was looking at your guys' pictures on your website. And, 
the the laces, those pink laces on her black, I think they were black boots. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, those pink laces. I was like, she is adorable, number one. She's a beautiful woman. And I was like, immediately, I wanted to steal those shoes off of her from that picture, and I wanted those. I'm like, those pink laces rock. They are amazing. She is a gorgeous woman. You are a lucky man. I am. She is a Baltimore Italian, so she's also a very feisty. Yes, we love and it. We look like Michael Jeff. She's about five two. I'm six five, mm-hmm. so we look up. There. But yeah, she's got uh, those. Were actually uh, Converse's. They were Chuck. Yeah. They were they they were just a, a special pair that they had made. And wow. Yeah, every I have heard so many ladies compliment those <laughs> boots. He wears them sometimes when we go out, and people are like, I want those. Oh, my gosh, yeah, I have to have them. I totally have to have them. They're great. They're absolutely great. I haven't had a pair of Chucks since I was in, like, fifth grade either, so <laughs> I better get back on it. Um, yeah, yeah, man, they're rocking these days. I know, and you know what? I just – and I did. I had some really cool ones in fifth grade. I had, like, hot pink. I had turquoise. I had all of them, and so when I saw your wife's pink laces, I was like, oh, those are so mine. i got to get those. i got to figure it out somewhere. <laughs> but <laughs> – um, oh my gosh! Well, you guys seem like you have just the the most amazing, you know, time, and you seem like such a happy and you know awesome person. And I mean, just talking to you, I, I think, wow, you know, it's I, I can definitely relate to you, and you know, the awe inspiring, you know, moments and those those moments of just being on stage with people that you know you've you've been a fan of for so long, and to be there and doing what you love is so incredible. You know, just to standing on the outside watching, watching on the, you know, watching you and seeing you get to do those things and hearing you talk about it. That is just so awesome for me. And well, some of the coolest, the, one of the coolest moments for us was after, uh, I think it was after our second season of the show, we were backstage with uh, Leonard Skinner for the mm-hmm. first time. I knew Ricky Medlock for a long time, but I hadn't met the rest of the band. And Johnny Van Zandt, the singer, came in, and he was just, apparently, scared were huge fans of our Spike show. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I mean, it was kind of like, hey, will you guys take pictures with us? And we're looking at him like, really? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're like, wait, you want a picture with me? <laughs> yeah, we were kind of like, wow. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we didn't realize how many people around the country, you know, watched mm-hmm. around the world, really, watched our Spike show. I get I get hit by people on the street and restaurants and airports every time I go out from that shit. So, so. Right. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's great. And, you know, well, on, on Spike TV, number one, it's got a huge audience, you know. But, you know, your show, everybody is into those types of shows. Everybody. Like, everyone I know, you know, uh, everyone watches something like that, you know, and um, what is the other one? American Pickers. A lot of people are watching that show too. And it's the historical side of it that people are interested in. And so I I definitely, I I definitely agree that you're going to be getting hit up by people for a long time, anywhere you go. And especially now your, your album releases on April 22nd, right? Yep. It releases April 22nd and we're going to be promoting the heck out of that for sure. It'll get, I can't talk about it officially. I can't give you any details, but right. I will be filming the pilot for a new TV show for mm-hmm. another channel um, in May. So oh, wow. I, I guess we'll see my face back on TV in the next six months. Oh, that's great. So then as as you get closer or when it's um, when you're allowed to actually talk about it, you have to let us know so that we can help promote it for you. But that's, Absolutely. that's really, really cool. I mean, you must be super excited about that. How's your family feel? Uh, my wife's tickled to death. You know, we're always happy. We always feel blessed and fortunate any time. Really, what do you do anywhere? I mean, I, I wake up every day and look in the mirror, and I'm never quite happy with what I see. And it's always nice when I bump into people, you know, that, that are happier with me than I am. So... Yeah, I just take it as a blessing, and yeah. you know, thank you. You know, and I, I can't complain. It's like I said, if I died tomorrow, I, I've got no real complaints other than I probably could have been a better husband and a better father and a pupil. So, you know. Right. Well, you know, I mean, I think if any of us, you know, analyzed our life, we could all say, oh, we could have done better in this area or this area. I mean, none of us are perfect, but 
You know, I mean, I, I think I think just you saying that right now speaks volumes of the kind of person you, that you are, and um, I think you should be proud of that. So, you know, kudos to you for all of your accomplishments thus far, and um, I know just your personality alone, you're, you're not slowing down by any means. You're just going to keep gaining momentum and more and more fun, crazy, great experiences, and Oh my gosh! But if you ever get to be on stage with John Bon Jovi, I swear, if you do not bring me up <laughs> at all, I am going to get mad. <laughs> I've already a few people. I've already had private messages from people when we when I did the show with Brent Michaels, and we're like, "Really, too long, dude?" Yeah, right. <laughs> You're like, "How could you not have told us?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, I am a guy, so it doesn't have that same effect on me that it might on the ladies." <laughs> 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 I know, I know, and you know, maybe maybe it is more of a chick thing, but really, like that's just great, and it's so awesome, and I'm so glad that you have one of those jobs that, you know, allows you to be you, and you get to have fun and experience the the things that the rest of us wish we could, right? Um, Lord knows, Lord knows, you know, what can sing. No, I can't sing either. Trust me, I'm not a singer. <laughs> If you've ever had Rick Savage give a wrestling interview, you'll know what the vocals are going to sound like on the song. <laughs> I am not a bird by any means. <laughs> oh, well, you're entertaining as hell, that's for sure, and you're pretty awesome. So I, I think that's all that matters. But well, thank you. You're welcome. But is there anything else you want to tell your fans before we go? I know that you're, you've got a pretty busy schedule here, so I'm not going to keep you so long, but anything Yeah, else? um... You know, usual plugs. I'd love to get people to you know, follow Instagram. It's official Rick Savage. And don't put a K on Rick. It's just by accident. If you put a K, you're going to get Sad from Death Leopard. And we've had enough confusion. <laughs> um, so you've got official Rick Savage on Twitter or on uh, Instagram. It's off Rick Savage for official Rick Savage on Twitter. And Heavy Metal Rick Savage on Facebook. And then I have a website. I just haven't updated it in a while. It's officialricksavage.com. All right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. We will definitely promote this. Um, you know, Born to be Wild on April 22nd. Everybody needs to check it out. Is it going to be available on iTunes? You're going to be able to get it on iTunes. It'll be released by Carolina Pieces Record label. Rocker Records is releasing it. The video will probably be on iTunes or on our YouTube, like all of them. And the single will be available on iTunes, Amazon, anywhere you download music. Awesome. All right. We will make sure everybody has that information. Good luck to you, and let us know whatever you have going on so we can promote it for you. And just good luck on everything. Hey, thank you so, so much for uh, the interview and for everybody out there listening. God bless you. Thank you all for being there. Without you, there is no us. Absolutely. All right. Well, you take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.